Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a video today looking at some G3 blends. And the subject matter is a display I saw at the Apple Park Visitor Center. So this is an Hermes display. Just they had these really lovely uh, sort of look like fabric or something, stretch fabric with something being pushed through it like a planar blade sort of thing. Obviously it wasn't fabric. This is the only other photo I could find online uh, as a reference. So I thought this would be a good uh, project to look at doing some more G3 blends, except in uh, 3D space. Last one I did, I think, was um, just like extruded corners. Okay, so here's my end result. Um, I've just decided to do one of the um, one of the protrusions and see how smooth I could get it going and get everything flowing so end result it's 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 pretty good uh one little bit that I couldn't get um quite as nicely as I wanted there's a little depression here but anyway I only have so much time I'm going to spend on this so I'm just going to let's just have a look at the form first so tricky area was up the end here where the curvature increases and also down the end here like deciding okay if this was like a planar um like a blade or a, a sheet of something being pushed through something would it would it suddenly stop um so I've, I've, it sort of runs out just a little bit here but as i said fairly happy with the result it's got quite a quite a tight um, G3 blend along the top, and I've tried to use G3 um, constraints and sketches wherever I can. Okay, so I might just roll through this model. This is my version 11. Um, I did try various things to build this end up here, um, but settled on this this particular build. Okay, so let's go back up to the top here. It's created a rectangle, which is my overall um, canvas. Created a planar surface and then created the main um, control, like the spine of the protrusion. And then I created a plane through there and then I created a, a spine height. So at this end it is touching my planar surface and I've got a height down this end. I just use the iometer to figure out sort of roughly what a height might be um, of those images. Okay, next up is I want to trim out an area on this planar face. So I've got a rectangle uh, trim control and a radius on this end with some taper on it. And the next thing to do will be um, to make my G3 uh, blend in between the arc and the line here so if you watch some of the previous uh, lozenge experiments of mine it goes into detail on how this arc blend here works so I'm, my current thinking is I quite like keeping a, a, a piece of an arc and then blending between an arc and a line um, using a in this case it is a degree 7 um, style spline, Bezier curve, so that's got eight CVs, and we've got a G3 connection on each end. Now I've got an angle con to control the curvature. Next up, I've extruded that, and then mirrored that across, and knitted those together, and then trimmed, use those to trim out a hole in my planar face. Then I've created a plane here on the end to create the first section of the the main side surface I guess you call it. So because this is a planar face we're matching to a planar face I haven't used the G3 connection here but I have got one two three CVs all lined up collinear uh, and horizontal, so that is the G3 connection uh, to this planar face. And on the other end, I've got a sort of a, 
the more linear, like a flat area. Because if you look at the photos, it kind of looks like it's kind of a bit flat through here, and then and then curves. Then on the other end, uh, obviously I'm matching. I'm going straight on here. I'm not going to match or put a tangency on here. I'm just going to. It's going to be a positional uh, continuity only at the moment. So G zero on that end, and then I've got a three D sketch here, which just sort of controls the flow through the middle. And then I've created a boundary surface. So the boundary surface at the moment is only got one boundary constraint, which is down here, which is tangent to face. No point in making it curvature because uh, it doesn't improve anything. And as far as I can tell, it is. We put our zebras on. It looks like a nice smooth blend along there between the surface and the planar face. Okay. Carrying on. Uh, sharp trim, so sharp end being this end, I need to create a little bit of a blend here, as I said at the beginning. So I've trimmed out an area there, five millimeters on each in each direction. Trimmed that area out, then created a again that's a degree seven style spline, um, which is because uh, this is a it's matching to a line on each end. This end it's matching to planar face horizontal, and here it's matching my spine, which is a linear, which is a line. So instead of using the G3 constraint, I've just made those collinear, as you can see there, one, two, three. Those control polygon segments, collinear and collinear. So that's a G3. Um, and there's the G3 connections on each end, that's a degree seven spline, style spline. Okay, uh, fill surface. Got the best result in a quick way using a fill surface, so I'll just increase my display quality and put zebras on. You can see there that's okay. Right, um, knitted that together, mirrored those two surfaces across, and knitted those together. Now, next is I decided to put this blend up the spine first after I created this end. Um, just sort of had a feeling that it might um, might be the right way to go. So I created a sweep, which is a pipe, pipe sweep, one millimeter diameter, and extended each end out. As you can see, so there's that pipe there to then trim out an area down that spine. Like that. Okay. And then I've just created some planes That's it at each end because I'm going to create some sections. I'm going to make a blend along this length here. Okay, so section on that end. And another section down this end. And the sections again, they're a degree seven Bezier style spline with eight CVs with a with a um a G3 connection on each side. To an intersection curve, intersection curve running through these faces. Okay. And then I created some sections down the middle as well because I was uh, not getting very good uh, tangent continuity along these boundaries. So I had to add in a few more sections one, two, and three, as you can see there one, two, three. And then created a boundary surface. Um, the boundary surface, when I was checking it, as I said in Rhino, um, it was uh, deviating by half a degree off tangent along these edges, which wasn't great, so that's why I had to throw those extra sections in. Okay, then I had to trim this end back because there was, um, there was some of the old boundary surface wobble happening in the end here. So I've trimmed this back and knitted that together and then created a fill surface through here. And that fill surface uses the constraint curve here, which was originally the end section of this boundary surface over here. I know it sounds a bit weird, but yeah, as I said, there was some wobbles going on in the end here, just small wobbles, um, and I wanted to get rid of them. Oh, one other thing, see, I've mentioned this before in videos, see how how uh, rough the course my, uh, my preview is, my preview mesh here is. 
Um, SolidWorks has still got this issue where even if your image quality is on maximum, um, it just goes and reverts to the quite a coarse mesh. So I found some macros someone had online uh, where you can um, push a button and hey presto, so back to maximum. But the uh, I just had to join two of the macros together, one of them to set it to the lower setting and then the next one to set it back up to the maximum because um, otherwise it was going to be two, I had to run two macros, so I've just got one instead. So, every time you do something in SolidWorks, the surfaces, it seems to put it back to the coarse, um, the coarse mesh. So then, if I want to look at it, I have to push my macro button. Okay, next up, this end here, so tricky. Um, I wanted to keep this, carry this section here on the end. Uh, around to being a centre section through here, but I couldn't run this as a revolve because this outside boundary here is actually its G3 connection through this area here. As you can see between that line there and line that line there, that's a, a degree seven um, style spline. So I created a revolve um, using most of the spline here, except move the end point here. Out to meet the arc, um, which is here in my rectangle. So I had to meet that point there instead of this one here, which is the style spline, and then just use the revolve to move that section around. As you can see there, so that's revolve, and then I've basically uh, converted entities to this edge here. So that's the only use for that revolve, so I hide that. Okay, then I've created uh, a few uh, lines here to use as control for sections because I want to create sections um, through here. Okay, and I've also wanted to cut back these areas here, back to where my degree 7 style spline ends here because I don't want to, otherwise we're going to have a nasty uh, G1 connection here. If I don't trim these surfaces back, so that's what this is happening here, and delete face, there we go. Okay, now it's time to put these sections in. So I've got two sections as you can see, um, both of them are running through, piercing through that converted entity off the revolve. And there's my upper section here. So again, these are G3 connections to intersection curves. Uh, intersection cur curves intersecting through these two surfaces. So that's a boundary surface. And I'll just have a show you how I built that. So we have uh, three sections in one direction. Um, being tangent along this outside boundary with our planar surface and in the second direction uh, It's forgotten one again Tangent face um, Keeps forgetting it Okay, tangent face On each of these boundaries over here And tangent influence at a hundred percent on these two boundaries and tangent influence is zero on this boundary here because I've got a cross curve running through here. Doesn't really need it. Okay, now if I turn my zebra stripes on and interrogate this, let's have a look what we've got. So fairly smooth um, result. It looks a bit coarse up here, but that's um that's the SolidWorks uh, zebra mesh. So if I If I dump these over into Rhino, you can see that it's much smoother in here because I've got a much finer um, preview mesh. Okay, and next up, knit that all together, and I've just created a fill surface in here. Um, 
band noted that together. So there we go. That is that is my Hermes uh, flown modelled in SolidWorks. Did that in twenty twenty. Trying to do G three blends where possible. I could spend more time and probably fix up this area up here, like that little sort of flat. You can see it there. But um, I've got to move on. Don't want to spend too long on this. Try and get the light played across it a bit better. It looks interesting from underneath as well. If you can get the light to go around there. Yeah, so that's G3. Um, something a bit more um, three-dimensional geometry rather than the extruded corners I did last time. I'm going to wrap this up now. That's it for me. And if you want the file, it will be in the description. Thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.